Welcome back everyone. It's always good to see you again in our lectures. So in this lecture we're going to be using variable length parameter list. So that's our topic today. Using variable length parameter list with subroutines. So again this is section 5 lecture 6. So let's jump right into it. So using variable length parameter list. What is a variable length parameter list? Well, a variable length parameter list is a list of values passed into the subroutine by the user, which we've previously seen in our previous lecture. We have the user pass in some kind of information or values and we can process that information. So for example, if I define a subroutine called add numbers and let's say if I want the user to add four different numbers, for example, one, two, three, and four, this is considered a parameter list. This is the list of values from the user that our subroutine can process. So one, two, three, and four are the values of the parameters passed into the add numbers subroutine. So the subroutine actually has a special array called the at character followed by the underscore. So if we look at this, it's just two characters, the at character and the underscore together. This is the name, the special name of an array of a subroutine that contains the the multiple values of that subroutine. So again, one, two, three, and four are the values of the special array called at, under, at underscore. So that holds all the parameter values of that array that's entered in from the user. So let's do some examples for I can sh show you guys in action. So let's first define our subroutine. So I'll type sub and then I'll call it print name or no, I'll actually call it add numbers this time because I want to add some numbers. And again, if you're defining your own subroutine, you do not have to add the parentheses at the top. We only add the parentheses when we call the subroutine. So let me go ahead and add a for each control structure, followed by a scalar value. So for each element inside our array, we want to assign that value inside our scalar value. So what I'm doing here, this add underscore key is a special array that's connected to each specific subroutine. So again, this add underscore array is just a special array to the add numbers subroutine and it's going to contain the list of parameters that's entered by the user. So it contains all of the values. And what the for each statement is going to do is going to look at each element value and assign it to our scalar variable called the value. So again, let me finish with my for each loop control structure. And I just want to print each element value contained in our parameter list. So again, I'll just put the name of our scalar variable, followed by a comma to print out our next value in our array or our next element in our array. So let's now call our add numbers subroutine. 
And this time we add our parameter list in our parentheses. So I'll just add some numbers inside the parentheses. One, two, three, four, and five. And these are my defined values that I want to put in as if I was the user. I save my work, click run, run script, and let's see what happens. As we can see, it printed one, two, three, four, and five. So the cool thing about a vari variable length parameter list is that we don't have to limit Perl to the amount of values or parameters that our subroutines need. So we can add as many parameters that we want and give it to our subroutine. So Perl does all the magic for us. So even if I added, let's say if I added some more numbers, Perl will not give us an error. Because again, this is a, a variable length parameter list versus just normal parameters that's defined either one or two or three. But with our variable length, it doesn't matter how many we add for our values in our parameters. So again, I'll go up, click run, run script, and it printed out the rest of our numbers. So again, I'll re-explain what the for each loop is doing. It's looking at each, each element in our parameter list or our variable length parameter list and it's just displaying the values of those elements. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know. And I'll try to do my best to answer your questions. And I'll see you guys in our next lecture.